evening and welcome. Welcome as we join in celebration of the Eucharist. Um, first, I'm going to take out uh, our Ben's folks here. Does anybody have a son named Ben that was on a bike in the parking lot last night getting repairs? No. He didn't come to church, but he said he thought his folks came here. So I said, I'm going to check for him. Put the word out, Father's chaplain. But again, welcome as we join on this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today, uh, July 4th, we celebrate our nation's independence. And so in a special way, let us remember and pray for those who have lost their lives in battle for freedom that we are enjoying in our world today, in our country today. On this very Independence Day, we should remember that every citizen should have a sense of belonging wherever they find themselves. And that freedom is not free. And we are all indebted to our national heroes who made this country what it is today. As citizens of this great nation, let us strive to fulfill our own civic responsibilities. It is by working together with love and integrity that we can build up a strong and thriving nation. May God continue to bless our nation and have a wonderful Independence Day. And so with that in mind, uh, we prepare to celebrate on the 12th uh, week, 12, 14th Sunday in Advent. Invite you to silence your cell phones and we prepare to celebrate. And know that our projector took a dive. Um, and so we're really going to work on your Catholic muscle in your mind and call in good church songs. So if you know the words by heart, sing. If you don't, come along a little bit. And um, just be aware that this is the Mass that, um, that is the live feed on our website. It's moved to the YouTube page as well. Excuse me. So we're all part of this together. So take a moment now to prepare ourselves for worship.
you are meek and humble of heart. Lord,
So we turn our attention to the first reading. We're uh, talking about Israel, which is kind of the country in ancient times, with uh, Egypt kind of to its south uh, west, and uh, Syria to the north, and another country to the west. They're kind of the middle between all those. So they were constantly at war, and somebody was overtaking them. So as we listen to this prophecy, specifically it talks about a sense of peace, and there's what is peace from the nations around, and that the king, and this echoes to our uh, Palm Sunday uh, first reading, the king comes, or the leader comes, riding not on a horse, on a horse of war, but on a donkey, on an ass, an implement of peace. So we listen. A reading from the book of Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come to, you, to me, all you who are labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, and my burden lights. I'm going to challenge you to step outside your Catholic, never memorize scripture, and memorize this. Come to me, all you who are labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I meet you humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. 
Okay, let's just work on the last line. Jesus is saying to you and to me, my yoke is easy and my burden light. Try that. My yoke is easy and my burden light. Again, my yoke is easy and my burden light. I want us to memorize that and to live that. This scripture um, has touched me in a lot of different ways and, and a lot of different times. I remember back when in the late 1900s, about 1987, I was the wise and the learned. I uh, worked for IBM. Uh, I programmed computers. I was wise and learned. I knew how that computer worked. I loved when the red light came on and it crashed so that I could kind of like take it apart and figure out what was wrong with it. Yeah, you're probably thinking, yeah, that's kind of sick. But I was wise and learned and knew how to do all that. And I quit that and I went to the seminary. I went from wise and learned, as the beginning of that reading says, um, to the mere little ones who didn't have a clue. Philosophy and theology were not my strong point, were not my preparation for the last 10 years, um, and went from the wise and the learned to the, as the gospel reading says, to the little ones. And he says, well, these are all the hidden mysteries, all the understandings. We think that we have to understand everything, and, and then we'll believe and live it. And I want to challenge us today not to be the wise and the learned, think we've got it all, we've got it all figured out, but the sense that we are the little ones, that we... Realize and live the Lord's words. My yoke is easy and my burden light. The yoke is easy and my burden light. We really believe that happens when we step back and look at the load before us and name just the part that the Lord, allow the Lord to name for us that part that should be upon us. My yoke is easy and my burden light. So the example with coming into seminary, it's like, okay, on, on day one, I didn't need to know all this philosophy and theology. I had five years to learn this. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Start with just the peace that the Lord has given me. Pass the classes and write the papers for what you have here. Um, and, and go from there. And then it took me back to that time when I did work on, on computers. I remember we were reviewing code and working on a number of things. And we were looking at the system and, and we were all worried about something. Finally, the team leader said, no, look. Here, you worry about the input, you worry about the output, you worry about the air recovery, kind of divided it into pieces. And I really believe that's what the Lord does to us, and that's a piece of what this gospel is saying. My yoke is easy and my burden light. And it's identifying the yoke, the peace that is mine, the peace that is yours, and living with that in life. My yoke is easy, and for my yoke is easy, and my burden are light. Let's look at a couple examples. Look at your health. Look at your health. Whatever stage it is in life, it's probably not as good as it was 10 years ago. I think everybody here is over 10 or 20 years ago. I realize at my age that I will never do an Ironman. I will never play football for the Green Bay Packers. I'm just not going to abuse my body, not even going to try for any of those kind of things. My health just will not support that. But I can. I can bike, I can move, I can walk. And for all of us, we'll look at our health and say, yep, probably not perfect, probably struggling in some areas, but Jesus is saying to us, my yoke is easy and my burden light. What is it that I can do? What is it that I must do to maintain my health and do the best that I can? Not the whole world view of everything, um, but the one or two things that I'm working with my doctor on, that I'm working with the Lord in prayer on, that I'm working on in life. And that's when we realize that rather than worrying about the whole burden of everything, we worry about the yoke, the, the part that's before us to, to worry about and, and to work on in, in life. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And we kind of bring that to the sense of the COVID-19 restrictions which we are, are living at this point. Um, kind of in, in that sense of being overwhelmed when you look at it. Should I just stay at home and close everything out so I'm totally safe? The numbers are rising in Wisconsin, if you didn't know that, even in Manitowoc County. Do I go out and not care at all? Do I wear a mask? And what about those that don't wear a mask? Um, you know, you watch TV, you watch the news, and they keep pumping all of this at you. And, you know, can I travel? You know, and sports. I mean, we should be in the middle of a brewer game these days. And there's nothing. Um, I, you know, it, it's easy to stress out about all these pieces of what COVID-19 is doing to us, and that's what we're challenged. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What part of it is for us? We can't worry about what our neighbor is or what isn't doing. 
or others, we worry about ourselves. That we are the ones putting on the mask, doing the social distancing, taking the precautions that are recommended, and uh, limiting our travel, um, but also enjoying our lives. Finding new and different ways of living during this time. Um, I'd be amazed as I walk around at night, I think there's more people out sitting and talking and visiting. It's easier to social distance when you're outside, when you're out around a little campfire. Or maybe it's just my living on the south side of Manitowoc that I'm running, that's what people do more than my experience of the north side was. But, to be able to say to ourselves, COVID-19, yep, there, there is a huge burden upon us. But Jesus is saying, for my burden is, Jesus is saying, for my yoke is easy, my burden is like, what part is it that we are being asked to pick up and to work with? Move to another item that's happening big in our time right now, the, the bat, black, black Lives Matter. We've seen the riot, riot, riots, we've been challenged in racism, racism Black Lives Matter. Um, and, it, and it is a difficult time when we're seeing it and we're hearing that, and in a dangerous time in the midst of, of all that is going on in, in, uh, in the different areas regarding that. Um, and it's, it, watching the news can be overwhelming and realize that burden. And the challenge, and some of it is good that we should challenge, are we racist? Well, you know, when, when most of the people look like us, they're white and, you know, uh, it, it, what's racism? But, but to really challenge ourselves and say, in my heart and in my mind, am I racist at all? And, and, and am I open to loving and caring for people regardless of where they have come from or their background or their history? Am, am I open to at least being present and equal with them to others? way that I challenge myself on that, um, if, you, if you haven't seen the priest on the moped, that's me, buzzing around town on the moped, and I love the way it catches people offhand. But I always have to use my left hand because the right hand is the throttle hand. And, and so I wait. Do I wave to everybody or only to the people that I think I know? If I'm going through um, an area where there's maybe more Hispanics living, am I waving at them as well as waving at other people? Am I saying hi to somebody if, if I'm at the stop sign and they're, they're in, the, in the intersection walking across? Am I saying hi to everybody or am I picking and choosing? And that's, I think, when the challenge of racism in my heart and perhaps in all of our lives <clears throat> kind of comes to the challenge a little bit. Am I equal? Am I open to all that? Am I treating them equally? And maybe that's my step, because uh, Jesus is saying, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That is the step that we take upon us today, this month. And not the whole world thing that all these problems are there, but that I'm opening my heart and my mind and my life wider and deeper. And then that brings us to the last point I want to challenge us with is in our prayer, in our daily prayer. Our, our weekend liturgy, very important, and I'm going to challenge those that are catching us on, on live stream and, and later on, on our YouTube page, that maybe it's time to come back to church. But it's not only about weekend church, it's also about our daily prayer. Are we opening our burdens and our lives to us, to our Lord each day in prayer? Um, as that scripture again says, come to me all you who labor and are burdened and I will give you rest. Are we coming to the Lord each day seeking that rest? And he says, take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I meek and humble of heart. If we're not coming in, in that moment of rest daily, we're not hearing that learn from me. <clears throat> and in that last line that we're working on memorizing, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But it's only if we're allowing the Lord to name that yoke and we're taking the yoke that he gives us. And I really believe the first uh, uh, main element of that is our prayer. That we bring all the burdens before us and lay them out before the Lord. Come to me, all you are weary, and find my burden some. And then do we accept and pick up the ones that the Lord is saying, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The challenge that's before us today and now. And in doing that, not being overwhelmed by everything and doing nothing, but doing the peace that we're called to today. So let's take that moment. Let's bow our head, let's close our eyes. Let us realize the weight of the world upon us. It be health and COVID-19, relationships, the Black Lives Matter, and the rioting, and all that. And all those worries that are upon us. And as we bring them to the Lord, we allow the Lord to give us the yoke that is for yeah, us. Because again and again, that passage right in our mind.
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We rise in prayer and we pray our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and in his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Yoking ourselves to Jesus. We are confident that the Father hears our prayers. For the church, that God will help us take up the yoke of Christ and follow him in speaking the truth lovingly, offering forgiveness to those who wrong us, and praying for our enemies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that God will guide us in living the values which we proclaim so that all may experience life, liberty, and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who do not believe in God, that the Spirit will lead them into an encounter with the living God and help them to be open to the one who loves them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to injustice and discrimination, that God will change the hearts and minds of those entrapped in judging people by its terms and help everyone to recognize the God-given dignity of each person. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those celebrating the milestones of life each day with joy and gladness in their hearts, especially as we celebrate the 90th birthday of Dorothy we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they will know the Lord's power in fullness of joy, especially James Creighton. And for those laid to rest this past week, Donald Schrader, Herman Holzer, and Muriel Miller, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now we pray our diocese and prayer to St. Joseph and ask him for his intercession. Good St. Joseph, as you led the Holy Family, watch over our families. Help our family and all families to know and share God's love. In our family relationships, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, watch over all who serve as spiritual fathers. In a special way, bless our Holy Father, our Bishop, and our priests. May they follow your humble example in their fatherly care for the people of God, the Church. With Mary, you raise Jesus, the High Priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families, 
to serve the people of our diocese. May our children and grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good St. Joseph, pray for us. Amen. Our offertory song is Be Not Afraid.
but through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. That it may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis of Assisi, and with all the saints and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace and our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Your Let us turn, acknowledging those about us, by saying, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Please pray with us now the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May you have a safe and a happy and blessed uh, Fourth of July. And I think the fireworks are on the south side of town, am I right? I'm wondering if I can climb our bell tower and have my own. Ah, maybe next year we'll be selling tickets for that. <laughs> Have a great evening. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is now ended. Let's let us go forth to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn is, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory.